So today I'm going to be reviewing the Hasselblad 503CX and really broadly um, any post 500C Hasselblad um, medium format 6x6 uh, leaf shutter camera uh, because they're all very similar. Hasselblad 500 series I believe came out in the 50s, iconic film camera, maybe the most iconic medium format film camera, shoots 6x6 square format negatives and has a wide range of beautiful Zeiss lenses produced from the, like I said, I think the 50s up through the 2000s. I'll take the camera out in the field, shoot a range of uh, classic black and white, modern black and white, and color, and show you some images. I'll also show some sharpness examples. So I scan these images with a medium format digital camera at you know, at least 60 megapixels or so, so I'll show you how sharp it can get, at least a decent idea. I'll offer some detailed pluses and minuses. I prefer to go more detailed rather than less, so there will be timestamps below. And I'll also offer some comparisons to some other medium format cameras I've owned, not necessarily like the most similar cameras, just the ones that I have a lot of experience with. So from the 500CM on, the Hasselblad 500 series supported interchangeable screens. So in my camera, I have a screen that has a split line focus. I forget the formal name, but basically focuses kind of like a rangefinder. So the lenses are beautiful Zeiss lenses. Zeiss has a reputation for making really contrasty rendering lenses. Uh, maybe the 70s on or so, they were the T-Star lenses. T-Star are multi-coated, really contrasty, flare resistant. Um, beautiful rendering. The pre-T-Star lenses are generally a fair bit cheaper. They have a more classic rendering, lower contrast, more flare. I think both of the lenses produce beautiful results. I've borrowed a friend's um, 80 pre-T-Star, like I think they're the C lenses. And that had definitely less contrast and more of a classic glowy look, but still sharp. Later on, Hasselblad offered these lenses in the CF and CB versions. Those are the most recent versions. and. Um, in some cases, they offered actual optical improvements. In a lot of cases, they are just a new body. And so if you're interested in a lens, you should probably Google like 80 CF versus 80 uh, T-Star. And in a lot of cases, the older T-Star version is effectively exactly the same lens, just with a different body. I have the 80, which is the most common lens, and the 120, which is a macro lens. That 120 is also incredibly mind-bendingly sharp, especially if you use flash, it will show you way more detail on someone's skin than you probably want. The 500 series is famously modular, but the lens is interchangeable. The prism or just simply looking at the ground glass is interchangeable. The back, of course, is interchangeable. Um, the screens are interchangeable, so you can have either just standard focus, you can have a grid or no grid, you can have a like a split prism type focus if you want that. Uh, so one of the biggest pluses other than the modularity is how fun this camera is to shoot. So I will quickly demonstrate the shutter. So... It's one of the most tactile cameras I've ever operated. Um, up there with Leica's. If you're trying to be subtle, not the best choice of camera uh, because it is quite loud, but satisfying. Another plus is that 
All of the lenses are leaf shutter, so there's a shutter built into the lens. There is a sync port on the lens, and you can buy an adapter to hook that up to your flash setup. So I've shot wireless flash with these, which is super cool. And since they're leaf shutters, you can sync all the way up to 1 500th, which is awesome. So you get super, super sharp results. The lenses will also focus close, so big advantage over rangefinders. I believe that other similar systems like the RB, RZ, and maybe the Pentax 7 can focus close too, but uh, compared to like a Mumia 7, Fuji rangefinder, Plowable Makina, close focus is nice for portraits. Camera is fully mechanical and can still be serviced. In fact, I had to have mine serviced when it arrived from eBay. And finally, subjectively, beautiful, iconic camera. I don't think there is any prettier camera, period. There are some maybe equal, but I don't think I've ever seen a prettier camera. People will stop you and say like, oh wow, that camera is so cool, uh, etc., which can be a plus or a minus. Sometimes you just want to be in the moment. Blood 500 series is definitely quirky. Well, let's talk about the square frame. You can interpret this as a plus or a minus. Traditionally, Hasselblad would have said, you know, just shoot with a square and crop after. I don't particularly like shooting and then cropping, so I tend to compose as a square frame, and square frame tends to feel very stable. If you shoot really geometric or clean compositions, you'll probably like it. The other thing you can do is if you shoot in a more snapshotty style, it makes it feel kind of more stable uh, because of the symmetry of the frame, so like Diane Arbus mostly shot on a Roli, not a not a Hasselblad, but her shots, despite being kind of snapshotty styled, uh, feel more stable, I think, because of the square. And the squares often love it or hate it. I think some people just hate shooting a square. I sort of fall in the middle. I prefer a sort of 4x5, 6x7 aspect ratio, but a square is okay. So it is modular, the downside is that the accessories are expensive, they're obviously not in production, people are obsessed with these cameras, and so some of the more unique or later gen accessories get quite expensive, like the screens can cost you two or three hundred bucks if you want one of the brighter screens with a particular focusing mechanism, that can easily cost you like three hundred bucks. Since it is an SLR, not a traditional, you know, hold it up to your face type SLR, but an SLR. It has a huge mirror, and that mirror will absolutely cause vibrations if you hold it at a slower shutter speed. So if you like to shoot medium format at like 1 60th of a second, or even 1 1 25th, this isn't quite ideal. Something with a just a leaf shutter lens, a rangefinder, will tend to work better for slower shutters. 1 2 50th, I generally find it fine, and it does have mirror lockup, which is very easy to use. So if you're on a tripod, you can just use that and not worry about it. Since the camera's all metal, it is fairly heavy. It also has a mirror in it that adds weight. If you put a prism on it like I do, that makes it even heavier. But of course you can shoot it without a prism, which is probably the more purest way to do it. So this next one's gonna sound ridiculous, but it trips a lot of people up. Camera has a dark slide. You use this so that you can pop the film back off. And uh, it's very easy to accidentally forget to remove the dark slide and try to shoot a photo and think that your camera's broken, but it's just the dark slide. As with pretty much any older film camera, there will be some reliability issues, so my prism, despite being relatively recent, like recent, like 30 years old, uh, is not super reliable and I don't trust it. I just use my phone or an external meter. And my body arrived, it jammed up very quickly after I got it. Had to have it serviced, which was probably a couple hundred dollars, but because I bought mine on eBay, I just told the seller, either have your camera back or pay for the service, and they paid for the service. 
I not really suggest buying these from a random seller on Craigslist. Probably either go to a camera store or a place where they, you can force the seller to accept returns. And finally, uh, they are expensive. I think I paid around $700 for the body uh, three, three and a half years ago. Um, prices have probably gone up since then. It's not a cheap camera, probably not a good choice for your first medium format camera, but a great choice for your second after you get your feet wet with something a bit cheaper. So I normally use the 80 because it's a more familiar field of view. It's something like a 50 millimeter, quote unquote, on a 35 camera. So I find the T-Star lenses to be very contrasty and quite sharp. I do not think that this 80 is quite as sharp as the Mumia 7 lenses. Just mentioned the Mumia 7 because that's the medium format camera I've shot a ton. There are other lenses like the 120 and the 100, etc. that are extremely sharp. Um, but I mostly shoot with the 80, so that's what I will reference. So to wrap this up, let's do some comparisons. Again, these will just be cameras that I have owned, or at least borrowed, uh, and so they won't necessarily be the top most relevant comparisons. So compared to the Mumia 7, the Hasselblad has more lens options, it focuses closer, it gets a couple more shots per roll, but the frames are slightly smaller. Hasselblad, of course, is a square frame, which is a huge difference. So another big difference is that Mini 7 is a rangefinder, the Hasselblad is a, an SLR, so Hasselblad's focus is going to be more reliable, the Mini 7 and, and many other rangefinders will drift. You can recalibrate them yourself, it's not a big deal, but they do tend to drift. The Mini 7 requires a battery, but on the plus side it has an electronic shutter which is going to be super reliable as far as hitting those shutter speeds. Hasselblad is mechanical, so best to have it serviced every so often, on the other hand, You'll never run out of battery and it's more reliable that you'll be able to find someone to service it 20 years from now. Huge difference in weight, rangefinders are just going to be way lighter so the Hasselblad is quite heavy. And the Mumia 7 has an integrated meter that is a spot meter and it's incredibly accurate and wonderful. My Hasselblad does not come with a meter and the meter prism that I bought has given me trouble. Let's also talk about the Mumia 6 because it's a more direct comparison. Effectively, same camera, different format. So if you like a 6x6 format and you want something smaller without close focus, with fewer lenses, then get a Mumia 6. Let's also talk about the roll eyes because those are a super common comparison and probably the two most famous 6x6 cameras. So the more modern styled roll eyes I think started coming out in the 40s-ish. And so they were around before the Hasselblad. They were the standard pro choice at that time. When the Hasselblad came out, it displaced Rolli, and so take that for what you will. So the the, the Rolli, Rolli uh, cameras don't have interchangeable lenses. That may or may not bother you. They don't focus as close, at least not without a close focus lens. The rendering on Rolli lenses is more classic because they predate the multi-coating that the newer Hasselblad lenses have. The Rolli's are probably not going to be quite as accurate on focus because they're not actually focusing through the lens and the framing I find quite accurate on them, but probably not going to be quite as accurate as the Hasselblad since the Hasselblad um, is showing you the actual lenses view. Both of these cameras have leaf shutter so they can flash sync at any shutter speed, which is awesome for studio work. Also TLRs like rangefinders have no mirror, so you will not have to worry about mirror slap, which can be nice at slower shutter speeds. So in conclusion, I think the Hasselblad 503 is a great choice if you want a beautiful, modular, really sharp 
close focusing, accurate framing, accurate focusing camera. And it is not particularly smaller light, but it is smaller and lighter than a lot of other medium format SLRs like a Pentax 67 or an RB RZ67. And I will be keeping mine, uh, one of two medium format cameras I'll be keeping, the other being my Vimeo 7, which is my all time favorite. So I post a video about once a month. I'm sorry, I'm lazy and also, you know, work. So if you want to see more of these, I have a couple more reviews coming up of the Contax T3, the Mamiya 6, uh, the Leica MP, and I'll have an X-Fan review coming up eventually too. So subscribe if you're interested in any of that or just random analog and digital photography stuff. If I said anything that's technically incorrect, which I positively did, please let me know politely and I'll be happy to respond to you. Also, feel free to just say hi and I will say hi back. Hope you enjoyed this video, found it informative or relaxing or both. All of my videos, music, photos, etc. are all licensed under Creative Commons. You can use them for free. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to like and subscribe. That just means you'll see more of them in the future. And I uh, hope you have a great day.